Hello, and welcome back to the next edition of Tom's Page Turning Tuesdays. We're about to start Chapter 2, and at this point, you've got to be asking yourself, why don't I just buy the book and get through it? Hopefully I've hooked you enough that you won't have to listen to me read five-minute segments for the rest of your life, because I have a feeling you can read faster and get through it quicker than waiting every week. That being said, if you're enjoying these, I'm glad you're here. So I'm going to read from chapter two of my book, Don't Call Me Jupiter. Oh, if I look a little different, it's because I've been in a wind tunnel and the wind was going this way. I decided to change the part of my hair. Uh, Mara always said change is good, so what the heck. <clears throat> chapter two, October 23rd, 1996. I'll sit here again, I say, moving the padded footstool into place in the damn chair, metaphorically speaking. You know, how last time, once I got started, there was no stopping me. Blah, 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 blah. The memories flowed like the mighty Mississippi. Dr. Robin gives me a professional courtesy chuckle in return. It was interesting to learn about your family. I'm glad the levee broke, so to speak, she says, smiling. Make yourself comfortable. I sit down and lift my legs onto the footstool. How did you feel after last week's session? Good. There's just so much going on right now, it gets overwhelming. Taking the yellow bus down memory lane felt good. We had such a tight bond back then. I really need my family now, more than ever, and I know they need me too. Have you been in touch with them? All the time. We talk on the phone and write letters. They've even sent care packages. That's great. I'm glad they're being supportive. How are you sleeping? It's been a little shaky. Why? Do I look tired? No, no, she says, studying my face. Not at all. Is work going okay? Yeah, work's good. Work is the easiest part of my day now. I'm grateful to have the diversion. It gives me something else to focus on. Are you sure I don't look tired? I'm sure. How's your appetite? It's getting better. I'm starting to wake up hungry again. That's good. It's important to take care of yourself. I'm on the one day at a time plan. So far, so good. That's a good attitude to have, Tom. She picks up her notebook, adjusts her glasses, and flips through the pages. I settle deeper into the chair and gaze into the mirror. The reflection outside is screened back and diffused by the sheer white curtains. When we left off, you had just finished telling me about your untraditional Thanksgiving in Sausalito. What did you mean when you said everything came to a sudden halt? Can we begin there today? I draw in a lung full of air and close my eyes. As I'm exhaling, I visualize being back at my junior high in the hollow. This is easy for me to do, and not just because it was a dramatic event that's hard to forget, but because I've thought of it more than once before. After a couple more breaths, I can almost feel myself sitting in that French class, looking out the window. Suddenly I see my mother and the school principal in the hallway walking towards my class. Something terrible must have happened, and my stomach performs a somersault. But as they get closer, I see my mother's calm, smiling face and the butterflies vanish. They're talking casually. Actually, they appear to be flirting. No one has died. Class gets out in three minutes. If they can wait, then it can't be that bad. The bell rings. I put my book into my backpack, zip it closed, and head outside. What's going on? Oh, nothing, honey. It's good news. Everything's fine. Charlie drove here in the bus and can't stay long, so we thought it might be nice for us to visit for a while. I exhale in relief. Charlie's here? I get to leave school early? Yes, indeed. To my recollection, this is the first and only time she's ever used the word indeed, which is odd, but I'm so excited to see Charlie and grateful that I won't have to walk home, but I let it go. Mayor and I are escorted to the parking lot in front of the school. Our optic yellow bus pops out like a lone sunflower in an otherwise colorless desert. Charlie's in the front seat with his feet propped up on the engine pad. Then he sees me, stands and starts to laugh, his face framed by his wild Einstein-like hair. The doors unfold. I run and leap up the stairs. We hug. His scratchy mustache is wiry and his beard tickles my skin. We laugh, we low-five, we high-five and throw fake punches at each other. Oh, how I've missed this silly man. I didn't know how much until now. This surprise reunion has her eyes wet with joy. Seeing my mother with Charlie is comforting and unsettling. She looks happy, and he's never looked happier in his life. But I have to wonder if it will last. Who knows if they're getting back together or if they're still just friends. 
We're picking up Molly and Alex next, Mare says, and points the way to their school. When we get there, Charlie and I sit and wait in the bus as Mare saunters into the building. Minutes later, she's on her way back, holding Molly and Alex's hands. They're swinging their arms like it's the best day ever. They're just as happy as I am to be plucked out of school to see Charlie. This is such a strange surprise, but then again, we're a strange family. More love and tears are exchanged as Charlie, Molly, and Alex are reunited. Once we're on the road heading home, Mayor turns around and says, We picked up Shelly and Chris before you guys. They're at home packing up. We're moving back to Davis today. That's pretty great, yeah? I bet you weren't expecting to hear that. She has a knack for dropping nuclear bombs with a feather touch. First, Molly's eyes get huge, then a smile eclipses her face. She lip syncs the word, really, and falls into my mother's arm. arms. Alex doesn't seem to care one way or the other. I'm confused. This is weird. We just got here. I assumed we'd be living in San Anselmo until I graduate from high school. Plus, I've been adopting. Adapting. Plus, I've been adapting. We live in a mansion, and there's a good chance I'll be deflowered by Hot Honey Harlow. I'm starting to like my new school, and living with our God family has way more perks than living in Davis. After all, we're part of the in crowd. We're in the hollow. Why are we moving back, and why are we doing it in the middle of a school day? Then it hits me. You haven't told Peggy, have you? What the heck is going on? That's enough. I'll tell you exactly what's going on when I feel like it. For now, all I need to know, all you need to know, is that it's time to pack up your shit. We're leaving in a half hour. Now go. So, come back next Tuesday, and we'll keep reading from Chapter 2. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.